For our first abnormality, let's talk about pulsus paradoxus. So it's called pulsus paradoxus because Adolf Kussmaul, who first reported it in 1872, couldn't feel a pulse at the same time he could clearly hear one by auscultation. So the finding was a paradox. So this occurs when you see a larger than normal decrease in systolic blood pressure during inhalation than you should. It's normal for your blood pressure to go down slightly during inhalation, but not more than 10 millimeters of mercury. So let's see what the invasive reference card has on it for pulseless paradoxus. Uh, systolic pressure drop of 10 millimeters of mercury during inspiration. Okay, makes sense. Cardiac tamponade, constrictive pericarditis. Interesting. But that doesn't explain really why this happens. You can't see the respiratory cycle timed up with this art line tracing, but you can tell that there's a huge difference between the largest waves and the smallest waves. This is actually really convenient to see actually on the screen because. Unless you have an arterial line tracing, it's pretty difficult to pick up on pulses paradoxus. Um, palpation is difficult. Same thing with auscultation with like a blood pressure. SpO2 pleth wave might help, but not always. Um, here's the mechanism. When the chest is at rest, the ribs are close to the core and the diaphragm is in its resting position, kind of like a, a parachute. When we inhale, we create negative pressure by dropping our diaphragm expanding our ribs out, that draws air in from outside, and it draws blood from your venous system into the heart as well. Here's that process broken down with the relationship between air and blood side by side. So increased venous return, lungs expand. Right ventricle enlarges, pulmonary vasculature expands. Septum shifts into the left ventricle, more blood pools in the lungs. All this leads to decreased filling of the left ventricle, which means a decreased stroke volume and decreased pulse amplitude during inhalation. And if you're like me and you really want to um, understand this stuff, you have to sit down with a sheet like this and just read over it and over it until it makes sense. Feel free to pause here if you want to check out like more detailed pathways for each disease process that Yan Yu put together. Uh, or here's a picture, and I'll show you the animations I made. This shows the main problem. The left ventricle gets less blood for a couple of reasons. One, venous return into the right ventricle, which shifts the septum left. Two, as the lungs expand, the blood vessels also get pulled open, just like the bronchioles. So they exhale and things go back to normal. And then during another inhalation, again, the septum shifts, lungs hold more blood. And this means that the left ventricle is getting lower preload, which means lower cardiac output as well. And that's pulses paradoxus, over 10 point drop in systolic pressure during inhalation. Pretty simple. So next we'll take a look at reverse pulses paradoxus and check out some of the pathologies that cause both reverse pulses paradoxus as well as one we just looked at to happen. I'll see you guys in a few.